You are listening to the commentary track for Paul. I am the director, Greg Matola. I am sitting in a room with Bill Hader. I play the role of Haggard. Simon Pegg, uh, representing Graham Willey. Uh, Nick Frost here, being Clive. And Lyra Park, producer. Tell us about this day, Greg. It was weird, wasn't it? Because we were in space looking down at Earth and we were very tired, I remember. <laughs> Did you have to mount the camera on the satellite? Hubble. On Hubble. <laughs> you shot it on Hubble, didn't you? I had a, I had a Hubble mount that day, yeah. It cost, <laughs> cost a lot. I love the Hubble rig. Moorcroft. Why was it Moorcroft, Nick? I don't know. We wrote it ten years ago. True. When my mother-in-law saw this beginning, when it said 1947, she said, why does it have to be then? <laughs> <laughs> like it was a tough year. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 47. This, that was the year my mother was born, actually. Mm. Oh. This is very much a sort of um, <clears throat> throwback to the beginnings of Back to the Future and Poltergeist and other films that begin with... Oh, a dog tracking shot on a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this definitely is it. That dog... Is that dog still with us? Dead. Dead? <laughs> but, we but, ate that dog as a, as a, as a celebration. Oh, the, the last day. He <laughs> was encased in carbonite, and he's still, still there in the dog museum. He won't recognise you when you come out of uh, stasis. Until, unless you take your mask off. Don't go! <laughs> Look at that lovely moon. <laughs> you had to wait all day for that, right? Yeah, and most of the night. That little Mia who plays um, young Tara, Mia looks, Stallard. Mia Stallard looks remarkably like a young Gwyneth Paltrow, weirdly enough, who's um, who is, um, of course, Blythe's daughter. In fact, she looks a little bit like Apple, who's Gwyneth's daughter. So I'm always struck by the casting. the lovely whiteness of that dog's teeth. He got them clean professionally. He's a very dog. Very look at that. Very white. Bang. Boof. Who are uh. these people? I didn't meet relatively to media. No what one was knows he like? who they are, do they? I mean, there's some kind of... Oh, no. They're just shadowy vaguely. associates. Is this all CG, Greg? That is all CG, that door. Who did it? The CG door code? That is designed by Oscar Wright. Oscar Wright. Oscar Wright. Right. Oh. Yeah. Oh, he's always designing something, that bloke. Brother of Edgar. Now, what is real Comic-Con and what's not? N none of it. None, none of, of this is real Comic-Con. That's Even this real San Diego. Out. That's real San Diego. Yeah. If that was real oh. Comic-Con, it would be just craziness, teething with nerds, as opposed to just faintly spattered. But Peter Jackson now, did lend us the orcs. Yes. That's right, he did. Oh, wow. It was originally Borg in the original script, yeah. but we decided it was just one Star Trek reference too many. Uh, wasn't it Borg before you got the gig? I think it was Borg before I got the gig, and after the gig it became orcs. <laughs> <laughs> that's tweaky. There's a guy from Collider. Hey, there's uh, 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 Steve. Uh, Steve Weintraub. Steve Weintraub. Yeah. yeah, Frosty. What? How much of that Tweaky was animated, Greg? Because there's some CG on his face, right? Yeah, we added some lights to Tweaky. Uh, you guys are in heaven on this day, this, right? The real <laughs> Tweaky was very <laughs> disrepaired. That weird bobbing I'm doing. It's so creepy. You got it on with that little... Uh, That's our <laughs> homage to Anton Deck. <laughs> <laughs> Alien Autopsy. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. When we actually went to the set of the Area 51, they re recreated that. I don't know which way round we did it. Yeah, we're 5,339 miles from home, and yet somehow I feel like we belong. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I, I think this is probably the most fun. That was that was Albuquerque. That was the uh, convention center where we we had a lot of stands that were provided by the real Comic Con. Um, I think they let us use their uh, fonting as well, didn't they? That there is a black vampire. Watch out. She bites. How much? $1,349.99. Uh, we had to call it the Black Vampire because we weren't allowed to use Blade, were we? <laughs> we weren't allowed to mention a comic that may or may or not have been called Blade. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't want to be in an R-rated movie because Blade was an R-rated movie. So. <laughs> Is that, oh. I wanted to call it the Blampire. <laughs> you mean that movie with Wesley Snorps? <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey uh, Tambor. The man, the myth. There he is. One of the driest men I've ever met. He's like Obi-Wan Kenobi to Jason Bateman's Luke Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> in terms of dryness. In dry scale. In, in the dry scale. He was a great, great fun presence to have on set. And we brought him back for the, for the uh, epilogue because, just because we wanted to see more of him being this horrendous invention that was Adam Shadow Child. I think if you're listening to this, you've probably bought the DVD or Blu-ray and you've seen the lovely documentary Who is Adam Shadow Child? Yes, check it out. If you which is it. a lot of fun. He, um, he was great. This girl was not actually 
an actor and she, they improvised that line and she, we kept her in and we had to take a picture, didn't we, Naira, to um, make sure she became an official. And we did. Yes, yeah. we did. There she is, Naira. <laughs> she's, you can't see this, but she's sitting in a big teapot. <laughs> Mayor confirm or deny, you had a relationship with Dan Close. That's how you got that picture. Yes, uh, Dan and I talked about doing a film uh, that still hasn't happened, but um, he's a great guy. I'm a big fan, and I asked him to draw the cover for the the uh, comic book that known as Encounter Briefs. One of my favourite little his details in the film, actually, that the, the title of that comic. That was one of my favourite things that you did. It was very clever. I just got it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <clears throat> I just... This, we, this, was, this was shot a year after we finished shooting. We went back and did this in, up on the Disney ranch in L.A. Because yeah. we wanted to just get a little bit more of Graham and Clive interacting together before you, you see them out of their element. This was a weird ranch, wasn't it? Yeah. The Disney ranch. Where or... they filmed Little House on the Prairie. Coming back from shooting that night, I was sharing a car with the producer, Naira Parker, on my right, in a big teapot, and we <laughs> saw some weird kind of shootout thing, didn't we? I, we did. Did. I kind of slept through it. But... Whoa, outside of uh, the Warner Ranch? Uh, yeah, I yeah. mean, uh, we were stopped. There was uh, an incident and lots of police waving mm. guns around. That's just the way things work over here <laughs> in the States. I, I slept through it. I was used to it, but Naira was bricking it. <laughs> That's like when we were in... We were in well, we were shooting and there was like a, a some gunman was caught. In Albuquerque, yeah. In Albuquerque. Do you remember? You, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. From the, uh, I'll show yeah, you this. Yeah. I'll show you the scene... Uh, well, yeah, when I'm, uh, it's actually the first time you see me and Joe on and camera. You, you there's and Joe like, like a SWAT guns. team. <laughs> yeah, there's like a SWAT team outside the uh, location. The first time you see me and Joe about the sandwich. This guy was pretty good. That guy in the middle, Simon. Uh, no, the him. Yes, very that. good. Jorge. 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 Uh, yeah, this was fun to do. It was nice to come back and see everyone again, and and um, we had such a good time on this movie, and we, we all got back together again a year later, and it was, it was like a bloody reunion. Yeah, we still liked each other. We still liked each other. Yes, we did. Now, of course, we, there was a little scene there when we, we uh, had another interaction with the orcs, but we cut that out. It just wasn't right. Look at that. Ooh. You can hear David Arnold's score beginning to trickle in here, beautifully rendered by the man Arnold. That was our very first day. That was a pre-shoot day, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think we were worried about a migration of giant spiders coming through the... Uh, the Galantulia. <laughs> I love the way that that was supposed to be Germans and the way that the, prop, the, the, way, the, way that the extras casting thought, OK, so blonde and fat. <laughs> it's nice to know racial profiling is still alive and well. <laughs> they said German, so we got them. They basically look like Augustus Gloop in various stages yeah. of his life. <laughs> or what's his name from The Simpsons? Yeah, yeah. Exchange student. Buta. Yeah. Buta. <laughs> My belly is full of chocolates. <laughs> Jane Lynch. There she is. Ah, uh, the wonderful Jane Lynch. This was the first thing we shot properly. Yes, and, uh, this the first, yes, the first real day of shooting. Moments before this, we had a shaman come in and uh, smudge the set and do a thing, which uh, our oh, first day. Did you guys have that? Yeah. Yeah. We did, yeah. Oh, wow. With a flaming stick. Yeah. And Jonathan, the first day, he kind of cut it short, which is kind of where our problems started. <laughs> yeah, that's I where think. we cursed we cursed the movie yeah. at that very moment. The second day, all those kind of uh, coffins came out of the ground, yeah. and the black rain. A lot of the blood that came from the sea, <laughs> we attribute to the, the blessing. Yeah. Someone did, um, I'm not going to say that, because it, it's the it goat, was a bit rude. The dog died, the one at the beginning. Um, now, Jane was just between um, sh having shot Glee and Glee coming out at this point. So she'd done, I think, the first few episodes of the sea of the first season, and it was about to be launched. That, that sweeps, whatever it's called, and um, so that was all before her. Her gleedom. Here comes the wonderful David Kettner oh, and Ke Mr. Je Jesse Plemons. Kettner and Plemons. My wife was more excited about meeting Plemons than anybody else. Because of Friday Night Lights. Yeah, giant fan. She was like, "No way." And Kettner's the best man. Oh, Kettner's such a, a great fun guy. guy. Good dude. He has five children. Wow. He's such a fat... He, he looks, looks very like a guy who would have five children. His, yeah. Christmas, his Christmas card was him with the, his, all his children with moustaches. <laughs> <laughs> I always imagine, David, you know, if you got an old sepia photo of the gold rush, there'd be someone looking <laughs> exactly like him in it. A prospector. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Holding a shovel. What? This was an amazing set that they built in Santa Fe. Um, the, the real little alien is, is actually not quite as replete with paraphernalia as this, but... Our, our set designers were extraordinary, and this this place was just... I mean, you couldn't look anywhere without seeing some kind of UFO stuff. Yeah, they actually, the set dresser drove out to the Little Alien, and you guys can talk about uh, visiting it yourself. 
Yeah, yeah. when this happened to us, we were sat there, minding our own, Jesse Plemons and Dave Keckner came in. <laughs> <laughs> really weird. <laughs> we don't like you. They were, no, these two scary guys came in and we didn't, genuinely thought we were going to be um, killed. Yeah, so they were we, very... we left. And we were being really rambunctious before they got there, weren't they? Like, could be like we own the place. Yeah. Because we got there and two guys, there were only two other guys in there and they recognised me and Nick from Shaun of the Dead, so we were all full of ourselves and being all cocky and then these two hunters came in and scared the bejesus out of us. Can we mention the Malians women joke? I really like that joke. Yes, you can. You've yeah. done it. That was one of those jokes that we wrote and then took the rest of the day off. <laughs> <laughs> we did that a lot. Yes, we did. We would have probably finished it a lot sooner if we hadn't. This would have been out a couple of years ago <laughs> if we hadn't have taken so many days off. After Lorenzo Zoyle, we went back for months. <laughs> <laughs> that is an actual highway that exists, the extraterrestrial yeah. highway. It is. A black top, I think. That we, we, um, we went on on our road trip. And it literally recedes into infinity. It's, it's a really strange thing because it, it's a straight road that just disappears into like a fine needle point. It's a bit disorienting to look at. Now this is still, we're back in Santa Fe again. But this is exactly what that looks like. This here. was like the nicest ever sunset I'd seen. Didn't we spend ages kind of Photographed. watching it until as a, we, as until a crew? We went, yeah, until we went blind. And we, then we all went blind. And that was when the zombies attacked. <laughs> I'll show you the actual point. Because I'm still sighted at this point. <laughs> <laughs> and you've still got two hands. And there's a cut. Now I'm blind. <laughs> well, you can kind of see it when you know it. Look, because I'm my eye line's meant to be down, but I'm, I'm just looking up. Yeah. We all saw Jacob's Ladder, didn't we? Not the film, the actual, the actual phenomenon. Uh, the handyman Jacob. Steve Medlin smokes poles. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it says on the side of the real black man, isn't it? Yep. I like your guys' run right there. Now, this was... We tried to shoot the Paul... Do you remember it was like before we shot anything, we had that night when we went out to, to the out to the sort of wherever this was shot and we tried to do the crash, but it didn't work? Mm -hmm. Yes. That was a pre-production night. We, we, we did the stunt once and uh, we were trying to shoot right at magic hour, the perfect point. The, the stunt driver couldn't see the markers on the ground. It had gotten too dark. So That's he, right. He, well, he'd gone he blind. He had gone blind, <laughs> of the staring sun. into the sun, and he decided to call it off, and then it was too dark to shoot it, so we had to come back the next night, and it was a big disappointment. We were so built up for it. It was like our first night. Eric Fellner had flown in specially, hadn't he, to see the stunt, and it failed. He'd come in and a special chopper. He went off. He went to sleep in a car. <laughs> <laughs> she would have done anyway. This is one fair. of my favourite jokes, which happens a couple of times, that little ding, 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 ding. There. I love it. This is a total Spielberg shot very much yes with the yeah the it's, lights the yeah. lights it's so good because you think it's torches but then you realize it's on their heads <laughs> it's they're complete <laughs> no, dorks they're dorks and this little the little blinding oh, moment the Again. hair bunching up as well is quite that's considering we couldn't see anything it was pretty well acted yeah i think we were reacting to the light on our dead retinas rather than the dead retinas what a great name for a band there's the ford was it a ford or a crown not Cran, enough. it was a cra Oh Look yeah, Ford. lovely. This was out on a on a roadside um, in Santa Fe in the middle of the night. In a few shots, the film gets a lot more expensive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Everything up until this point has only been five grand. <laughs> this point is you know super bad level, and now yeah. now it's, suddenly it's suddenly. mega bad. Yeah. I really hurt my hand doing this. We could have shot the entirety of Shaun of the Dead for this scene. No. I was thinking before he comes out properly, he looks a bit like Greedo. <laughs> yeah. He does. He's, yeah. Well, um, that was something you kind of improvised on the night, wasn't it? That you yeah. did once and then we had to try and... Yeah. Oh, really? And that becomes kind of a... Yeah. Kind of thing. Look at him. I, you know, I had a really funny feeling, <coughs> excuse me, on the way back from the premiere, on the, the premiere, premiere if you're in America. Um, I was driving home, well, I was being driven, and um, oh, God. <laughs> in a chariot, <laughs> everyone settle in. And uh, I thought, oh, I really miss Paul. And I, I, it was an odd feeling because I realised I'd never actually met him. But I, I had this feeling of not because he hadn't been at the premiere and stuff. And I was it's, going home and think, oh, who wasn't there tonight? Oh, Paul. Oh, I missed that it, guy. It's true. I spent so much time uh, on the animation. I really started to think, yeah, my kids, my kids all know Paul. Even the babies, they can walk around going, Paul. Yeah, Tilly doesn't like him. She kind of, she sort of sees this picture and goes, no. <laughs> oh, <No. laughs> she's like so there's too a... too mainstream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too, it's too, it's too broad. It's too broad. <laughs> too, broad. <laughs> too, broad. <laughs> too much too much slapstick. I like the earlier stuff. Yeah. The oilier stuff. 
Uh, Look at his eyes. They're something amazing. They did an incredible job. It took, it took a good seven months to get his eyes right. I think at this point we should say the words double negative. Yeah. Oscar yeah. winning. Oscar winning double negative. Double they negative. did an incredible job. I'd like everybody who is, has it in their power to make sure this little guy goes up for your consideration the next year because it's an amazing achievement. 300 or so animators worked on this, didn't they, Gru? Yep. 300. Shut up, Naira. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get a word in edgeways. Are you talking? Jesus. <laughs> <clears throat> now, me, Bill and Nick and Greg and Naira, that's all of us here, basically, <laughs> uh, we shot a test scene years ago. Oh, yeah. Where, Bill, you voiced Paul, didn't you? I did. It was, uh, it wasn't this scene. It was a scene where uh, Nick is... Uh, oh, he wakes wake up. Yeah, yeah. 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 But that was a lot of fun. That was a good time. Is that a line about the station agent? Do you remember? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Annie Lennox. Annie Lennox. <laughs> Annie Lennox. Annie Lennox. Annie Lennox. <laughs> I had to say it. Sorry. I think it was one word. <laughs> oh, here he comes. Here he, here he comes. Is. Here he comes. Team Wolf 2. Mm. The definition of suave. Mm. Mm. JB. JB. I like to call everyone in that sense. J Bay, Bai Hey, that's you. <laughs> Grey Mo. Yeah, you call me Nafo, don't Naipa you? Naipa and Nafo. Nafo. What was this, Greg? Was this piss? <laughs> <laughs> was it actual piss, Greg? What would the film what would the film industry use? I, I think Jason asked for it to be piss, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 like, yeah. I, yeah. That spit is obviously has to be red. So what did you do? Squirt water from a tube or something? Uh no, he just had water in his mouth and Oh, okay. Amazing. What's and we lit it. And there's the oh. voice of an angel. <laughs> Mr. Gorney Weaver. Where was that, Greg? Was that a set? This was a parking garage in ah. Los Angeles. I've never been there. Whose space were we in? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually Sigourney's space. Yeah. Okay, when, when she you goes just to come LA. shoot at my house. I don't care. <laughs> it's like Tony Stark's... It's, it's, it's her panic room. Yeah, she, her panic room. <laughs> her panty room. She does not need a panic room with that big gorilla in the house. Listen, now, these guys? little... <laughs> <laughs> Is this thing on? <laughs> Guys, anybody? <laughs> These little vignettes of when you see voice came later and because we decided initially she in the script she you never saw anything of her until the end, but um uh we decided that you needed to get something of her. So Greg, you went into this without uh, anyone being there, did you? Didn't you? We did. We uh we just pieced all those things together in one day, very quickly shot them MOS, a bunch of little <clears throat> cutaways. I mean it's you know, it's something it's a little technique. Ah, this is, there we go. Now, this is the day where a SWAT team is outside right now because they arrested some guy. A man who had committed a murder, murder. the week before, and he'd been on, on the lam. That's yeah. right. And there was, so when we were shooting that, there was a uh, police helicopter. That's one of my favorite shots. This is the one we did with... Yeah. Yeah, this scene. So, Bill, you, I guess you've been attached to this film longer than anyone other than myself and Nick. That's and right. You were, the, you were part, of, <laughs> part of the early team. You are a friend yes. of Paul. I was yeah, a friend of Paul for a long time. He came yeah, over. And it came out really good, too. It was cool. I remember when I did the table read, and you guys were like, hey, look, when you showed it to me, I was like, wow. Oh, yeah. But it's so weird to look at it now, because it's so... Compared to what he became, it looks like Johnny Quest or something. Yeah. It's just and yeah, the animation guys, is so, yeah. And your guys is looks were a little different too <laughs> a little bit <laughs> yeah you guys had different looks i look like a sort of fugitive pedophile and nick looked like uh <laughs> <laughs> like brian may like <laughs> well, i look, look like, like 2.0 you, like, you look like you're doing the passport photo later yes on. yes that's exactly what i look like that's where we got that like a fugitive pedophile's m mentor <laughs> <laughs> manager <laughs> i manage pedophiles well, where are we where are we going who are you calling who the police well, i should leave <laughs> uh, oh, that. lovely roundhouse kick. Good. Yes, that happened yeah. in the moment. That's Nick suddenly attacked the uh, the, the stand-in dummy for Paul. Amazing uh, jujitsu kick. I kind of broke its jaw as well. It didn't it? You, kind of, you kind of broke an incredibly it, expensive uh, animatronic. It rattled. There was that whole thing about him getting pregnant because you touched his jaw. Uh, I mean, you, you, you see it in the film. There's like a goo that comes out of Paul's neck. But there was another bit that said about him. I'm pregnant now. <laughs> what were we saying? Potentially yeah. that could be the sequel where. The, Paul, the, yeah, the has <laughs> Paul's baby. <laughs> Paul has Clive's baby. Uh, uh, this was the first scene that we shot with Bill and Joe. Yeah. On this night, Simon, you taught me how to make a proper cup, cup of tea. Cup of tea. You did. That's right. God save right. the queen. Yes. 
Yeah, no, shut up, child. <laughs> He's so fun. That was fun. It was not, this was like, I think this is the first time we'd done anything with anyone else, I think. Was it? Because it felt just like, oh my God, well, this is it, now we're into the film. We shot on that road quite a bit, didn't we? That was the same road that we saw the car turning over on and yeah. 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 lots of the chase stuff. And you improvised that thing about Benny Hill, Bill, which yeah. you kept in. That was funny. So you know Benny Hill? Because, <laughs> hey, yeah, growing up in Oklahoma, we thought he was the only, uh, British. The only, only British person. <laughs> <laughs> Winston Churchill, Benny Hill. Yeah. I love that when you meet Haggard and O'Reilly, they're just so lovable and bumbling and kind of, they're playing games and... I like considering what happens by the end of it. <laughs> it's quite <laughs> it's totally it's dope. Yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. mean. It's quite an it's arc. Like, it's the Marco uh, Corleone arc. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but in 40 <laughs> minutes. Right, 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And this, that, you yeah. guys worked so well together. All this stuff was improvised. It's kind of. Way to go, Dirty Harry. Um, I love well, Joe's line here. Like a cold, I caught it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Joe's the best. I've been a fan of his since I was 15 in the state. The state, yeah. It was a huge thing for me growing up. So when I first met him on Superbad, I was like, yeah, I was like meeting one of your heroes. Yeah. You know, he was just huge. I, um, yeah, he gave me the DVD that when we were shooting and I watched it. And I, don't, I only knew him from Superbad and a few other little cameos that he'd done. And he's so, he's so amazing in Superbad. That cameo is such, so <laughs> memorable. You guys on MySpace? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's such a great line. Yeah, I knew Joe f socially from hanging out in New York with all the guys in the state and just basically Honestly. hanging out at bars and going to see them perform at Fez and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, that was such a big show. That was a big show for me. <laughs> That's just like it. Predator. And Joe right. was, of course, the voice of Paul while we were shooting. <laughs> yes, That's right. Right. We, we realized very quickly, well, we kind of, we had talks about this before we started shooting, that we needed to somehow have a presence on set with us so that it could be more conversational and real and not just some somebody reading in the lines like you know Sheila our script supervisor or an AD who had to be an actor and um, Joe it worked out so well because Joe Joe's and Bill's scenes were separate from us for such a long part of the film that Joe was able to come in and be O'Reilly and Paul are never actually in the same scene at the same time apart from at the farmhouse so Joe was on set almost all of the time on his knees with little knee pads on wasn't he Naira I said Naira <laughs> um, <laughs> He received those knee pads, didn't he? In a framed, nice framed knee pad. Don't just nod, say yes. <laughs> For those of you who can't see Nari's <laughs> nodding affirmative. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and Joe was very, he was great. He was very, took it very seriously. He would look at tapes of what Seth did in our rehearsals and pre production and, and take on board Seth's decisions and improvs and bring them in and add to them. And then Seth later went on and took a bunch of Joe's improv lines and, and recreated them. It was yeah. bizarre and really cool process. Fant I mean, amazing because it was exactly what we needed was that little changeover from, you know, Joe being so concerted <clears throat> about checking out Seth's stuff and then Seth taking on board what Joe had done so he could recreate it. And, and take credit for it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I love This was, on, in the script it says, Haggard steps out from the only man-shaped cactus on the landscape and that is that. That is exactly <laughs> what he does. It does a little wave. We took the afternoon <laughs> off after that, didn't we? Yeah, well. we did, yeah. I remember going out there and the guy telling me, like, we found a bunch of rattlers over here this morning. And I was like, oh, good. And I get to stand out here all day. <laughs> Wasn't, weren't all those cacti bought in? No, yeah, yeah, they yeah. don't grow like that uh, in New Mexico. Yeah, those, are, yeah. those are Hollywood cactus. Yeah, that's like yeah. Wiley Coyote. Yeah, <laughs> they came from the Acme cactus. <laughs> yeah, Acme yeah, factory. factory. There's a little bit of a Looney Tunes influence on this film. Like, I think the Haggard's demise later in the film always struck me as what? a I die? classic. I what? We lost our scene, Greg. We're going to well, break him in gently. <laughs> What? Sorry, Bill. <laughs> oh. What about the scene I filmed when he came back? Sorry. Right. You guys had trouble with this, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, we started breaking. Uh, again, just because Jason Bateman's so, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, he's just that, that kind of dryness to Jason Bateman always was making me laugh. Just like the way he was just saying his lines was making me laugh. Listen to me, freaking fuck. I want yeah, like freaking fuck and stuff was just making okay. it. He got, there was a bit, I remember we had a big conversation on the phone about casting of Zoyal and I got very truculent about the fact that it needed to be somebody who was a credible threat and was a serious person and not, and, and we kept getting the note, it has to be somebody funny, somebody relevant to the comedy audience, and I was like, 
I was very, no, no, no. And then they said Jason's name, and I kind of went, oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, it, I just thought, no, But yeah, he does. He plays it. He really plays it. Well, well he's, yeah. he's one of those few actors that can play it totally straight and yet be... I mean, you think of Arrested Development. He's like the straight guy in that, that show, and yet he is still one of the funniest characters. Yeah, Jason, Jason is a really superb actor. I mean, he's fantastic in Juno. I rewatched that recently. His yeah. performance is so good in that and movie. Teen Wolf 2. Yeah. Oh, my <clears> God, he's amazing in that. Little House on the Prairie. Wasn't there a Teen Wolf 2 rap gift for him? Yeah, we bought him the Japanese poster. Yeah. <laughs> and signed it with wolf puns. Lots of wolf puns. <laughs> <laughs> I think I signed you the second best thing in this. <laughs> <laughs> Which is brilliant, because considering I can't think of a single other thing in that film. <laughs> yeah. Now, this was a little gas station. Was it a real gas station, Greg? Yeah. It was. Yeah. I've seen this gas station in another film fairly recently. No, kind really? of a zombie apocalypse, yeah. Really? Yeah, I did. Wow. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. I think you're lying. This man was very handsome. That's the end. <laughs> and that's the end of that comment. He wooed the entire cast and group. He did. Well, this was a, this was a case where we could have cast uh, a, a comic in that role, and I just I'm glad we went with a, a, a really good straight character actor. His name is Mark. Silverston? Silverston? Yeah, that's right. Mark and Joe, who was the uh, who was the cashier. Joe Berryman. Joe Berryman. Which is actually... Who looks like he walked out of a, a Coen Brothers show. I was thinking yeah, he looks a bit like... Does. Or an eyebrow convention. He looks a bit like <laughs> Pre Preston Lacey from MTV, from the Jackass series. Oh, yeah. yeah. Jackass. <laughs> Only we can say it like that. Jackass. <laughs> that's how they say it. But Jackass. <laughs> from the Jackass series. Yeah, he goes... He just have a good Paul looks and sunlight. But, you yeah, know, he CG does. CG characters I, always kind of look bad once light I had a out. meeting with David Heyman, who produces all the Harry Potter films, who had uh, shockingly been a producer on my first indie film, Day Trippers. Love it. And he said, the hardest thing is, is a CG character in daylight, and you have a lot of daylight in your movie. Big, open expanses of daylight, so yeah. good luck. And once again, Double Negative did an amazing yeah. job giving him real presence. That... I mean, there are times when I see him and I really see Seth in, in his little eyebrow movements and stuff. Yeah, they spent a lot of time studying yeah, the, like, the face cam. Seth wore this face cam that was kind of like, um, like a harmonica holder, like Bob Dylan at Newport yeah. thing that just shot back <laughs> at his face, and they really studied it, or I made them study it. Now, this was something that actually happened to us on the road trip. Yeah. That we, went into we, the script. We a, a bird, bird struck our vehicle. Oh, I, for, yeah, I forgot that. We didn't actually. revive it and eat it, though. No, we just ate it. This, is, um, <laughs> this was on the same day. <laughs> We don't mind eating dead birds. That's why it's so, so silly that Paul is so affronted by the idea of eating a dead bird when we eat chicken all the time. Now, wasn't there something in the script? We, didn't we write the waspish colour of the, the golden oriole? And then got oriole. The, the, the hard part was there are all these laws against using trained birds in America. You can't, there are very few birds that will actually let you film. You can't film anything that is indigenous to the United States except for a um, few exceptions. And it wasn't going to work to have a, a chicken. <laughs> to revive, they, I have a chicken fly. They at the strike windshield. a chicken. <laughs> they strike a stray chicken. It's, it's weird that you can't use a new. Uh, we this we this there's a funny story behind this scene. We kind of ummed and ahed about it for a long time during the production. Whether it 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 was one of the first jokes we wrote, and and it it's a great sort of trailer moment. But we kind of started to 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 sway towards not having it in there because we felt like it arrested the pace. But then eventually it just went in. At the very last second, actually. And it, and it kind of works because it, it, it breaks up the, the bird uh, eating and the... Yeah, I think it's a nice transition from their shock at Paul. We did that thing where he really hated it, then we saw it and we said, no, it's all right, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, you know... Yes, I've eaten many people. Look at, his, look at his little chest. You can see his intercostal <clears throat> muscles moving. That's what I think is amazing about this. Yeah, all the stuff that happens in your peripheral vision is just incredible. Look, I can't... Yeah, the weird I... soft-focus stuff is just crazy. The way he's breathing, you see his ribs appear and his... I don't think. You know what really annoys me is when you see when you, you, you people comment on something they've seen and they go, oh, it's just so shit." You know, like when you realise the work that goes into this kind of stuff and the, the detail and the, the thought, or this what was it called, specularity or something? Or yeah, yeah that's that's sort of the, the reflectiveness of this, the relative reflectiveness of skin and yeah. I mean, you know, for someone to say, "Well, that that doesn't look real," that's well, what are you going to compare it to? Yeah. <laughs> I did read somewhere someone was saying that we'd taken the easy way out by doing CG. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you year prefer and a half someone of, in, a, in a costume. Now, I, now so, a couple of people have said to me uh, about. Now, I've never seen American Dad. I don't know what they're talking about. No, I've never seen it. Who? Do you know who Roger the Alien is? 
Only from comments online. Yeah. Is it here. apparent? It's an alien that's like Paul. That's. I looked at it. I looked at a YouTube clip, and he talks like Paul Lind. Do you know who Paul Lind oh, no. was? He was an American comic who was always the center square on Hollywood squares. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This was a fun uh, shot because I remember uh, you talking me through this, Greg. So, concern? Not concern. <laughs> so more concern. freaked out. Ten percent more concern. A little more it. freaked out. She's saying what? <laughs> really concerned. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, is that great. Was. <laughs> great direction. <laughs> and magic. Now this was a real RV park, not not pearly gates, but. Um, we I shot there for a few days. We're going to see a nice uh, mural coming up that um, a lovely girl called Ruth, <laughs> who works in uh, Big Talk, did one right? of our Big Talk family. Yeah, yeah, she's uh, one of the development bods, and she drew it, and it's on the wall. Very good, it is too. And she draws hilarious cartoons. Yeah, and there's the beginning of the the introduction of Mrs. Kristen Wiig playing Ruth Bugs. I'd just like to point out at this point that um, Naira Park is still here. Naira, how are you? <laughs> How's it going? She's curled up on good. the floor. This is good. Oh, I didn't mean to ask you, was it intentional to quote Sean with the line, there's a girl out there? It wasn't, actually. It wasn't, it wasn't a moment of um, self-referentiality. It was just, after a while, you just repeat yourself as a writer. Because <laughs> I, I love that, but we've never actually discussed that. There's a girl. Well, then Sean did it. It's a, a girl. slightly different, yeah. In the, girl, yeah. in the garden, in the garden, there's a girl. Um, no, it wasn't supposed to be. But it did strike me when I watched it. It's a bit similar. And she's also dressed a little bit like Mary in a little denim skirt. It's funny, Kristen it? wig, you put her in those glasses, and she's still just awesome and beautiful. So, yeah. so, so beautiful. Yeah. Cute she had a real hell. problem with this. Uh, I remember her getting the giggles so badly, and it was impossible to keep a straight face because she's so f her laughter is so infectious. <laughs> she really lost it. She was crying, I remember. She was wiping the tears <laughs> from her eyes. Her eye. Her wiping the tears her. from her one good eye. So she was half blind when we shot this. Yes. Yeah. yeah. She'd seen half of that sunset. <laughs> <clears throat> she was lovely. Yeah. Mm. He's Mario. I love David Arnold's um, beautiful sort of English folk song that he wrote for this. The love theme. The love theme for Graham and Ruth. Look, I love her little feet going into these grubby slippers. <laughs> I threw that in for Tarantino. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like that's a very enigmatic shot of uh, John Carroll Lynch there in the doorway. I didn't know that was John Carroll Lynch. Yeah. Who directed this? I don't know. Now John, that is his intro introduction to the film. He's a wonderful actor. Great, great guy. Zodiac. Oh, he's scary in that movie. Well, I saw him in something the other day. He was suddenly on. What was it? I can't remember. Yeah. Shutter Island? Yes! <sighs> you know. Look at him. Can you see the fire in his eyes? See the actual fire reflecting in his eyes? It's so cool. And also the lust. Yeah, yeah the lust. The lust. lust. Yeah. Now, we, originally, the, when, you, when we first started doing this scene in, in the performance capture studio with Seth, it was a much more protracted mime that you saw Paul, like, like doing unspeakable things with multiple phalluses. <laughs> and um, in, the, in the end, we found it funnier if it was on Clive watching Paul rather than on Paul just doing a porno mime. You can see him now, he's just got a schlong in his hand. It's <laughs> <laughs> all right, isn't it, Universal? No, you were right. And there was a big long, in the script originally there's this big speech about how everyone's bi on his planet and that humans are really st stupid because they get so scared of their own sexuality and it's just all about having fun. It was basically a big, like, manifesto for bisexuality, wasn't it? <laughs> I don't know where it came from. Well, I know where it came from. <laughs> I had some new experiences shooting this movie. It was fantastic. A lot of explaining to my wife. It was a party. It was a big party. <laughs> Here we go. Here he is. This is the man. This is the man. This what was this like, uh, Greg? Well, I, first, you guys should tell the story about how this all came to be, that Spielberg's voice is in the film. Well, we... Um, we were working on Tintin, and, and we told Stephen about the about the film because Steven Spielberg, Steven Spielberg, about the film, and, and that you know there was this idea that he um, he he'd been calling Paul over the years, and Steven Spielberg said, "Oh, maybe I could be in it," and uh, we were like, "Okay." Nah. Then. <laughs> but that, I mean, the the whole thing just grew out of that. I mean, the 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 Raiders of the Lost Ark sort of warehouse was Dean Egg's idea, wasn't it? I think that, I think I suggested was it to him, and then and then they made it look really good. Um, yeah, and directing him, I got so scared because we had multiple cameras on Seth and I had to wait until all the, the special effects people 
told me we could go because we were doing this audio recording and every time we did an audio recording at Seth, we'd always have many cameras to the, for animation reference purposes. And I missed the high sign to say action. So I forgot to call action for <laughs> Steven Spielberg. And finally he just looked at me and said, can I start? <laughs> and, and then you died inside. You blew it. I died inside, but then I gave him some direction, and uh, and, and it improved his performance. He took I it. like the yeah, uh, the note it. or the one of the stage directions on this part of the script was uh, Graham and Clive dancing. It is the first time they have ever danced. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys nailed that. You you totally nailed it. That was the day I broke my hand. It was. I remember you were in a terrible. Oh, this is the day you broke your hand. A lot of pain. Terrible yeah. idiot. <laughs> Nick fought through an enormous amount of pain. Well, I would, I'd gone blind, and, and, uh, and now you were all clammy, and I remember you I like, did. had sweat on you because you were in so much pain, white and the pale. Vicodin was, like, coursing through, trying to keep you level. <laughs> it was incredible. And they made you a special cast, didn't they? Th yes, they did. That, removable that was the last thing we shot in Santa Fe. That is, that's our last shot. Oh, yeah. this is. Oh. That wasn't, it was us waking up. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that was, yeah, that was yeah, shot in no. the studio. And Steven Spielberg um, made a said to us when he was shooting that thing that he never meant E.T. to be a Christ metaphor and that there was nothing, his healing wasn't supposed to be some sort of messianic thing. Because we got him saying messianic, which he agreed to say, but he said, you know what, I never really meant that, which is interesting. Uh, we're going to have uh, a bit more Oscar Wright designed T-shirt action in a second, right, Nora? Yeah. Indeed. There she is. There she is, still here. In that big teapot. Thanks for doing mouse, <laughs> despite the throat infection. <laughs> A hashtag bullshit. And here it is. <laughs> there it is, Oscar Wright. There it is. Who, if you've got any of the uh, other, uh, other DVDs featuring uh, Nick and myself, you'll see Oscar also did the plot holes on Shaun of the Dead and uh, he also did, and Hot Fuzz, and he also did the Danny's Flick book and he's done the closing credits on this film. Oscar's a... He's the real deal. He's the real deal. He's a more he's he's a he's a more high quality right <laughs> than his <laughs> schlocky brother. Hey, <laughs> uh, and here he is. <laughs> oh, I mean that bag. Uh, now Joe Latrulio was actually in this bathroom, wasn't he, doing the lines off yeah, while uh, he would sit on the toilet and uh, pretend to do a poo. That's right. Which made us laugh. She really pounds that door. I really I feel they, her pain. They, they amped it up as well in the sound edit because she's quite a delicate bird, is Kristen. She'd probably break her arm. Oh, in his own image. Oh, his own image. Well. Now, here we go with the, with the, um, the thread. Oh, oh, bang, the fainting thread, where everyone that sees Paul um, passes out. Wig took a good fall there. She, she did. did do a good fall. I like his little face when he says, well, it's a wrap her up in a rug or something. Yeah. <laughs> he looks like... <laughs> I like the idea of Paul, the fact that he just wears those little cargo pants and, uh, and flip-flops. Yeah, like, that's what they gave him, too. Yeah. <laughs> and, they, and also that um, he has a CND tattoo on his arm. Which, which Dina came up with. Whenever I see this bit, I say to Nara, bed knobs and broomsticks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did when we were doing this, because a lot of this was done with, with fishing wire and, and mix of CG. Uh, I really felt like I was making a film from another time. Look, this is what really? I look like in the test. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> Morning. <laughs> I like the way he says morning back, like he just gets caught so unawares. This was fun to film. The chasing thereof. John Carroll Lynch is a great actor and he's good people. Yeah. There, I said it. Do you remember when he got sick at your house? We were watching Invasion That's of the Body right. Snatchers. That's right. That's right. And he, we were watching, uh, after you cooked this, a, a great Sunday. Uh, a roast, no, what what lovely roast Nick lamb. Him. Yeah, I think Nick no, poisoned him. No. I think Nick, we would have all been sick. <laughs> Nick uh, made a great Sunday roast, which uh, was awesome, and then we watched Invasion of the Body Snatchers. And John, and John got sick. He brought around a big box of fireworks, though, because it was the 4th of July, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. and we let them off in your garden oh, with Joe right. and Kristen. Oh, that's, yeah. that's why I wasn't there, because I went home that weekend. Damn. Um, I would point out that amazing shot of the um, drawing flying through the air was all CG. Was it all CG? Oh, wicked. Yeah. Where am I? Um, we spent a lot, because we were all living in Santa Fe, we all spent a lot of time 
with each other. Just uh, hanging out, making dream catchers. We went to a rodeo. <laughs> we did go to a rodeo. We went to the rodeo de Santa Fe, and it was so funny because we all dressed up like cowboys, and Bill, who's from where the real cowboys come from, was just like, he just I refused, refused to. <laughs> <laughs> I, showed up. I grew up with this shit. Hey, I'm not going to go up <laughs> yeah, and Bill put on your nice yeah, little <laughs> cowboy hats. <laughs> I remember you saying that, and I go, okay. Yeah, obviously, <laughs> obviously not going to pursue that. <laughs> I was like, no, you guys, no, I'm you guys look like, like my this. relatives. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a blast. That was so much fun. I can't forget that. The next day, Nick had a big barbecue at his place. You. I, I was so hungover. It was the most hungover I've ever seen you. Oh before. man, I was you, like throwing up in his toilet. You I went home. home. I did go, did home. go home. I didn't get home until six a.m. and then had to get up at ten o'clock to cook forty racks of ribs. God. And you went dancing that night, didn't you? I did. Yes, and uh, got into a bit of trouble and had to make a high-speed escape in a rickshaw Ped <laughs> pedaled by a girl that must have weighed 40 pounds. Do you remember when me, you and Joe went to that oh bar and the guy, gave us, the guy gave us the uh, shots? The jalapeno This guy gave tequila. us shots because he, I think the local girls were coming over and talking to me, you and Joe, because they recognized us and yeah. stuff, and these guys were getting angry, and they go, hey, here's some shots in the house. And we went, all right. And it was just pure jalapeno sauce. Yeah, with tequila with as well. Tequila. It, it bur they had to give us milk because it burnt. Yeah, we were, we were drinking out. out of milk cartons and <laughs> like holding ice cubes in our mouths. Oh, and then God. the next day, it was like passing molten guacamole. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. It was <laughs> molten moly. Well, molten moly. Molten moly. This, this is my first. This is my first. This is me and Joe's uh, first shot. There was but a really funny bit in. First day. I think it's in the bloopers when you bang your head. <laughs> I do smack my head. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was my very first shot. I hit my head, and I was like, Sorry, "You'd like put your head through the <laughs> I, 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 I thought, "Why did you use it?" What does Joe touch there with a pencil that makes him want to spit it out? He licks the he licks tip the... of his pen. Right. Uh, but you would do that with a pencil, not with ah, a pen. And I remember, forgivings. Greg. Remember, I showed up with long hair, and they cut it, and then you were like, "More, more." Remember, <laughs> yeah. you kept on coming back, going, "Shorter, shorter." Uh -huh. my hair. What did uh, Jason keep calling you, Ansel? Yeah, Ansel. <laughs> more concerned. I remember Nick and me and Minnie, my dog, were sat outside this, watching this scene on the monitors, just thinking, we have scored so high with you three. It was, and John as well, this whole scene, we were just sat there just thinking, we were big I, shit eating grins on our faces. I think there was a faces. certain amount of fear as well on our parts. We, I remember you and I saying, God, we've really got to up our game. Yeah, yeah, there was. It was like, oh we my God, no way. We were, <laughs> we were doing the opposite thing inside, uh, going, can you believe we're working with these guys? <laughs> <laughs> It was like they're from the UK. I they know we, how to speak English. I think Simon and I may have actually had a serious conversation about it at one point. Yeah, we said we've really got to <laughs> every day, up. man. We've really got to come in and bring our <laughs> bring our game. game every day. This was this the scene is... after which Naira put me on a special diet. <laughs> <laughs> Naira, who's still here, incidentally. If you, can, if you, can. <laughs> don't, you don't need to sweep up, Naira. You should put the headphones on. <laughs> it, Naira, conf confirm or deny? My food was flown in from LA weekly. That's true. <laughs> You're tired of green chilies and... <laughs> I love this scene. I love his flick there, as if to say that was the greatest joke in the world. <laughs> this is so sweet, this scene. We had a big, not an argument at all, we had a discussion about how long Nick's head should be on the steering wheel in, into the next scene of <laughs> Ruth and Graham, because it's so funny, just hearing... <laughs> this was um, up at the ski bowl. Is this right? Taos? So, uh, Santa, Ma Santa Fe. It's, yeah, oh, it's Santa Fe Mountains. We're about 10,000 feet here. This uh, this was the first scene you shot as well with Kristen, wasn't it? We didn't use any of it because we, we shot actually, it. We actually, we reshot it. It's all it breathy because, and... Yeah. Well, we shot it on a platform, didn't we, to try and get some well, sort of... Why did we shoot it on a platform? Because we were going to green screen change some oh, of the background. Right. It, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was something ultimately our budget limitations kind of were stopping us. That's right. Now, where where our unit base was here, we uh, had bears a couple of nights, didn't we? Because we were yeah, so we high up in the mountains. Black yeah, bears. we came yeah. up to uh, to Video Village. They gave me some notes. <laughs> what did they say? They helped the scene. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah. Can you have more bears in it, I think was the yeah. name. Yeah. Yeah. More honey in this. Should the alien should be a bear. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I got someone, just someone for the part. Just <laughs> No, this is the first. Uh, th this either this or one of the days we were up here was the first day me and Joe and Kristen had hung out together a lot because Joe was. We were just talking about poo. I remember it was uh, like the second day. That's all... Joe's kind of uh, <laughs> icebreaker yeah. always. Talking about different. <laughs> it was well, because we were drinking that chlorophyll to to cope with the altitude and it made your poo green. Here Can I say it is a great icebreaker because we all do it. <laughs> yeah, you know? we all, everyone does it. Yeah, no, right? except girls. <laughs> Kristen doesn't. Yeah. Actually, some of her poo stories were the worst. Yeah. I can drink? She did some funny stuff here. 
the whole thing of her making up the swearing came quite late to the script. Ruth didn't really have a third act, even you know as we approached the fun shooting draft, and we we rethought her character and. Because she, once she'd sort of like seen Paul and had her kind of world blown apart a little bit, she didn't really do anything. She was more sort of passive, and we thought it'd be funnier if she actually, if we explored what would happen if you suddenly everything changed for you. So that whole swearing thing came out of that, and she she just grabbed it with both hands. It was so funny. Well, it was such a good part of the. You know, I mean, Paul's this guy who is a catalyst for change around him, and gets gets these characters to uh, open up their eyes a bit to the world. And what's so great about how Kristen played it was that she actually clearly, it's against her character to swear and smoke pot and um, be a sex fiend. Mm. She's, she's, her character is extremely sweet. You say character, obviously. Um, yes, character. Kristen and, uh, in real life, oh boy. And, <laughs> oh boy. Oh no. So oh, she, no. <laughs> I have to work with her every week. Oh no. no. Oh, oh. No, I'm joking. So, so her ineptitude is extremely funny. Well, she's like a baby, things. isn't she? She's, it's like, it's, I mean, she's born again in a weird, ironic way, and she's like a sort of finding out all this new stuff, and she, she came out with some of the funniest... Baby boners was one of the funniest <laughs> swear words, but we didn't... We ended up not using it, yeah. yeah. That's in the bank, though. We that can have that. Yeah. We can use it. You, you don't want to lose something like that. When you see our next film, Baby Boners, <laughs> you'll know where that came from. <laughs> they're babies, and they've got boners. <laughs> <laughs> Simon Beg and Nick Ross, they're baby boners. <laughs> 3D. <laughs> <laughs> it would have to be, really. That's a See, C she that's looks CG. hot right there. I think she looks good with the T wonky looks eye. Hot. With, the, with the wonky eye. Oh. Yeah. Now, it was actually a note came in from the studio. Um, late on in the process, we were already in Santa Fe. And I remember said, Naira, you were... Bears. That was a good day. <laughs> you were scared to telling us. What did, they, what did you have to tell us, Naira? <laughs> she can't even do it now. <laughs> Come on. No, that was not a good day. I've blanked it. This was all because we'd already had some changes, and they were all good, to be honest, but when they happened, we were like, what? No, we don't want to be look more normal. And that Clive's and Graham's look was very odd originally, and, and we dialed it down a little bit. And then they also suggested that Ruth be healed earlier than she was in the original script, which was at the end when Paul says goodbye. And our initial reaction was, what? And then it made such sense that, you know, Paul actually gets her on side by giving her her eye back. Uh, it was, the, I think, one of the best notes they gave us. Yeah, and it really sets it up for what things that happen later in the film. Yeah. Because it was a very sad... So, thank you. Who universal. did all these uh, drawings? It was Jason Brathill. And... and Brassel. 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 And Jim Murray. Yeah. The, Jim there Murray. were two different artists who did the, the different... Some One did the sketches and the other did the Jelva covers and paintings that are... Oh, yeah. They're all great. It was very important to me that Graham be a talented artist, that we know that he has, he's got yeah. gifts and, and imply that also that Clive is a very good writer. They just... These guys need a, just a nudge. And Jim, and Jim and Jason did all the artwork for Spaced. They were Tim Bisley as well, so it's some thematic... The, this, is, uh, <laughs> this is the day I found out that uh, you were a father, Simon. Oh, is it? Yeah, we were shooting this. Oh, how funny. All the car stuff with me and Joe was kind of shot on the so same day. So that was July day, the 1st. Right? Yeah. It was all the same day. And uh, that's when we found out. Yeah. Tilly was born. I called up Nick and... Uh, Hello. I said, Nick, it's a girl. Ah. That's right. There was a bunch was of exciting. us who are all expect. I was expecting me yeah. and my wife. And Greg, and expecting. Greg expecting twins. And our second AD was expecting someone. It was a lot of... Yeah, Ryan. And also... Yeah. Um, um, Viet on the uh, effects team. That's was, right. Um, yeah. He had a baby. Yeah, it, was it was a very fertile. Titty farting. <laughs> yeah. And we were all, we were all going at it. <laughs> I took a week off. Uh, and it was all scheduled in, and it worked out rather beautifully in the end. I think you still owe me a dinner for looking after Minnie. Yeah, Nick took care of my dog, who. Um, well, I tried to. Oh, is, I didn't actually mention is in the film at the beginning, just being carried by Gabby. Chazen, who's Liza Chazen, one of our producer's daughters, dressed as, both dressed as Princess Leia. Go back to the beginning and have a look at that. Yeah. You have the wig in the office, don't you? Yes, I do. The dog's wig. The dog, I sometimes the, put the, it on my dog wig. chin when you're not around. Do you? Yeah. I like yeah, a, I a layer beard. A little look a bit like Lincoln. Now, the, one of the most frequent tweets I've received in response to this film from people that have seen it is, and I've seen it like four or five times, is people have said, did I enjoy the film? You bet your big fat cock I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I think's lovely. Uh-oh. What's the... Oh, oh, my... They hit a van like that earlier at the little... Ailey? What? So it... 
Now, I have to give credit where credit's due here. Frustratingly, one of the jokes in the film that has been most commented on by people that have seen it is this use of the cantina band yeah. music, uh, which was Greg's idea. Yeah. <laughs> Are they friends of yours, this, Greg, this that was band? My, that, this was my one idea. <laughs> um, it was the best they, one, though. They, uh, they're a local uh, western swing band in New Mexico. Yo, Latengo. And the funny thing is, I, when I told them they had to learn the song, they said, oh, we, we played that at a wedding for a Star Wars freak. They knew it. <laughs> no way. Oh, that's yep. cool. Interestingly, I was, and no word of a lie, was talking to Paul Hirsch last week who'd edited Star Wars and The Empire Strikes Back, and he said that as a placeholder back in the day when he did Star Wars, he put in a Benny Goodman uh, tune from a live album which is very, very similar to what eventually was in there. Oh, really? Yeah, and it, it was the thing that persuaded Lucas to, to kind of um, to have a jazz tune in there rather than anything else. And he played it to me on his phone. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah I think I saw your tweet. On, was it Avalon? Was that the song? Yeah, Avalon, that's right, yeah. by Benny Goodman. I, I grew up in a, a big swing jazz household because oh, that's did my dad's era. And uh, I love that music. He showed me things. This was our last day of uh, filming. <laughs> Yeah, this was a scene that kept getting bumped because we, we kept running out of time to shoot it, and I thought we were just going to eventually have to do it um, <laughs> with puppets. And, um, Which is essentially what Joe and Bill were, really. Yeah, yeah. they were just moral meat, puppets. Meat puppets. <laughs> they were meat puppets, <laughs> right? <laughs> All that stuff with the hitting you came up with on the day, didn't you? Yeah, that sort of... yeah smacking each other. Yeah. Yeah. Shooting this uh, fight scene we're about to see was the funniest thing because Kekner was absolutely hilarious all the time. He's a great... Uh, a uh, uh, comedy fighter. It, it actually, it, we missed one of the great lines from Jesse, just for speed, because uh, Ruth actually goes back and hits um, Gus in the balls as well. And um, Jesse said, Sailors in Sa Landlock, <laughs> Wyoming. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Jesse said, Ow, my balls, which is from Idiocracy. This was a little joke, wasn't it? Because there's always sailors yeah. well, in, 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 in a big in, bar uh, fight. There's a huge bar fight in uh, 1941, the Spielberg film, yeah. which I think is very underrated. <clears throat> yeah, it is um, underrated. It's a fantastic movie, and uh, there's tons of sailors in that. Yeah. Say, someone actually says, sailors. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah we, we have Kegner saying, shit, sailors. Yeah. Uh, what's been nice is that a few people have picked up on that fact that why would there be sailors in Landlock, Wyoming, and, and then we actually do say, our sailors. Here he comes. Steven Seagal line. It's probing time. Nice. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that was a genuine roadhouse that we filmed at, and someone, as we were filming this, someone drove past and shouted, Nuke Hollywood. <laughs> That's right, they did. Yeah, they shot yeah. wild hogs there, I think. That's right. Yes. And they were really, uh, the town did not like uh, they were sick film of it. crews. That's because the uh, wild hogs triumphant were really mean, apparently. Yeah. That's just conjecture, I don't think it's true. I your, hear what, lawyers. Your mother in law and father were here, weren't they? That's right. Big, big Vernon and Trudy were here on this day. Oh, why does it have to be bikes? <laughs> <laughs> Rolf's RV. We had big, we had big discussions about this. Only an idiot would do that line because I was determined that it just hang in the air. But the consensus was that we needed to qualify. The reason they stop in, in prospect is anyway. You know what I'm saying. What did you think about that line, Naira? Hot chocolate and <laughs> no, she's like a little girl. She's oh. hiding inside the piano. <laughs> come out. She's clambered into the piano to oh, go to come sleep. Out. It's okay. Come you weren't on. No, you've come all the way to New Look, York. Ruth's turned her t-shirt oh, inside her. There oh, we go. And cut, and cut a nice V. As yes. a kind of. <laughs> this happened off screen. That's because Nancy Steiner, who's our fantastic costume designer, had this idea that Ruth gradually became more sexy and more sort of. Um, more sort yeah. of modern as she went on. So she cut oh, her t-shirt off. I remember this shot was cool. We did this a couple of times of the pulling up of the cars. It was very. Uh, but to to Spielberg. studio filmmakers out there, yeah. is it one of those classic, the, 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 one of those shots that was, of course, twice, three times as long, and we just lopped off the front of it because you got to keep moving. Yeah, pace. It's a comedy, pace. Now, yeah. when I show them the picture of Paul here, it, it was daylight out. Yeah. Remember? Oh my god. And they put out, and they put a tent around us to make it. Dark. This Remember is the that? only time I've ever I ever this, saw Greg. This right. Oh, is it? No, no, no. It's, it's when they because it's their they their reverse. Yeah. yeah, their reverse is this that is dirt, this is day. That's like it's full blown. We shot all outside. night, didn't we? Yeah. yeah, that was hard. That was a location we originally scheduled for three days that we had to crash into yeah. two, and that was just crazy. But hard. wasn't that the night when I was the first, the only time I ever saw you approaching stressed out was when it was getting light and Bill was doing his universal executive. <laughs> hey, what's this? Is this does this belong do, to me? Do I own this? Do I own this? Is this mine? I think I think I did. A, a great, great. <laughs> Bill, Bill, please, yeah, please, please stop doing that. Not now, Bill. Are these Not all now, ours? <laughs> 
And he always left in a helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I own this, right? I, I, yeah, like a, uh, yeah, like a little like ladder came down. And he was like, anyway, that. bye. <laughs> 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 and you were, go, you were going, walking on that plane going, this is a big psych, right? I can't touch it. It's so far away. It's a background. How far away is that thing? Yeah, he always thinks he's on a stage. So this is all real. <laughs> this is great. Like the dumbest, richest man in the world. <laughs> now, this little town uh, of um, Las Vegas, New Mexico, was where they shot um, a lot of stuff, right? No Country yeah. for All Men. No yeah. Country and, and Red Dawn and... Isn't this where the and pharmacy... Easy, and Easy Rider. The reason, easy Rider. the reason I put Easy Rider on the marquee along with Duel uh, is that we shot right on the block where they meet Jack Nicholson's character. That's right. It was That's a right. courthouse just up the road. There's a little... Yeah, there's a little fire station. There's right just a few doors down where they shot a bunch of scenes. This is where the pharmacy exploded as well, isn't it, in No Country? Yep. Oh, yeah, it was like we, this next street over, wasn't it, when he puts the thing in the... Yeah. yeah. And we also stayed in that hotel that's from uh, where they had the chase. That's no right. Country yeah, for yeah. All Men. Where Woody yeah. Harrelson uh, meet, yeah. meets Where Where we checked in was where, you know, the little cat with the milk and all <laughs> that stuff. Yeah. And really you, me, and Joe sat in the lobby. And do you remember? Because we couldn't take Minnie in the bar. So you, yeah, me, and Joe. We sat out and drank. Until about two in the morning. Just talking about movies. We had yeah. an, awesome. a lot of fun the nights we hung out in the bar. We did, didn't we? We stayed out way too late for shooting nights. That was the only time I think we really... That's right. Probably pushed it too hard, but it was, we had so much fun. I Wasn't there hot. talk of a ghost in one of the rooms? No, yeah. Kristen was, this, well, Kristen was, this, was convinced that her chair was haunted. Oh, wow. Right, <laughs> right. But Harmony Carrigan, who runs my website, she came out for a set visit and we sort of took her out for, a, uh, for an evening and it ended up with me, Joe, and Kristen just absolutely bladdered in that bandstand, just falling around. I don't know what she must have thought of us. Make she still runs it. your site. She still so. runs the site, bless her, Harmony. We love you. As you can see there, we're burning baguettes. She drew, drew a beautiful picture of you. Do you remember? She did. Oh, yeah, 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 with uh, a cigarette. She's an mind. amazing yeah, artist. She's very good. Um, Kristen really kills this joke so hard. She's yeah. so funny in this. Didn't we lose... Uh, we lost the night in this as well, didn't we? We had to come back this and scene, shoot we, this. We, we, well, we had to shoot just Paul's uh, plates, basically. We shot this entire scene from, I'd say, about... 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. one night, very, very quickly. <laughs> um, it was uh, quite challenging. We shot part of it at the studio, didn't we, and part of it yeah. in the woods by Yeah, the we basin. shot all of Paul's plates for him to... But all you guys were super heroes that night, and you had to work. After a really, really long day of doing these scenes of dying and so forth. Oh, that's right. Come in oh, we'd done the whole thing. and smoke pot here. That, we'd done the whole goodbye, hadn't we? I remember because... Uh, we, this was after me and Kristen had been making out for like an hour. And we came back and we were all like sheepish, like, mm. all right. that was weird. Because we know each other really well by then. You're, you're right? No, I just don't like talking about it. Oh, no, she spat in my mouth. Oh. <laughs> she released oh, a spider no. into my mouth from her yeah. mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't, yeah, didn't, I'm not going to say that. It was about an eel. I, I have to say, I'm, my, <laughs> I don't want to go there. My heart sank a little bit when, um, I saw the Red Band trailer before the movie came out because they put most of this scene with Kristen in. And I know it was because it's a major selling point because it's an amazing thing. But there's one of the, one of the heartbreaking things about marketing is that you sometimes have to blow your, blow your best bits. And I think Kristen is so good in this scene. It's a shame they had to put in the trailer. And Sigourney and Paul. She's good in it all, though. Yeah, she's There's another amazing. 98 and a half minutes of great stuff. In an stuff. ideal world, you wouldn't have trailers. People would just go and see the film and be surprised by every moment, but that just isn't the way the world works. <sighs> It's a shame. Well, well, she was Roger Moore, very Roger nice. Moore. <laughs> she was very nice. Now, originally in the script, there was this whole thing that we all fainted at the same time because Paul, we were, we started to get stoned with Paul because he had that thing E.T. had where like Elliot felt what he felt. And yeah. What did you call in the script? Projective empathy. Pro empathy. Projective empathy. Yeah. yeah. And um, we couldn't. Uh, it didn't. We just got lost in the end, didn't we? We didn't use it. No, look how good. Oh, that Paul looks right there. That's crazy. Do you remember in the uh, oh, rib cage? Do you remember when we, when one of the first trailers that was knocked up, they put a fart noise over Paul there, <sighs> and he stretched and went. <laughs> we were like, please don't <laughs> do that. I still see online people say there's a fart joke in the movie. There's there's not a fart, no, joke. fart jokes in movies. I've got to say, I don't think humanity will move forward until we get over the fact that Fart's we all fine. fart. I don't think yeah, we can. Yeah. We can't evolve any further until they just. We just get over it. That's a good point, actually, Nick. True, true words have never been spoken, ever. Um, um, now, this, Kristen waking up here. Oh, oh. hello. <laughs> Laurie Dillon. 
Hello. my driver yeah. in, in Santa Fe, who was lovely, lovely lorry. Let me tell you, mate, she's a driving me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> she was an actress, stroke, stunt woman, stroke, teamster, stroke, everything. She'd been a firewoman, everything. She's amazing. And she drove me and Minnie into work every day and, um, uh, and read for that part of the sexy lady and got it. Why did you keep saying stroke in the middle of all that? Yeah. yeah. Nice. You say slash. The inside <laughs> of my thigh. <laughs> I'm going to say stroke. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you say slash. This is a lot about America, Bill. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> the little was, cowboy. Uh, who was in that? Who was in that cowboy? Tanner. Tanner. Darren's right. son. Our stunt Ooh, coordinator. Our stunt coordinator. Because yeah. uh, we couldn't afford to render an entire cowboy outfit. But they, what, We're D not Avatar. Aren't we? No. D-Neg. That did some amazing stuff there, with, just with the muscles in his head, because that was just Tanner with a mask on, wasn't it? Yeah. Wow. Oh. Oh. Mm. Weird look for me. Trust me. Now this... Huh. <laughs> for Bob Rackner. Was a... <laughs> Robert. <laughs> Robert. 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 <laughs> Kristen did a thing initially in the, in, the, in the campfire scene when we all faint. She sits up again and looks around and then falls back to sleep. Um... Well, no, she doesn't. She gets up to leave. But um, that little sit-up she does there was a repeat of that. I like the way Jason's hair is all messy when he knocks at our camp, our RV. He's like a professional he... bedhead, isn't he, Jason? Well, no, I mean, after being in with Laurie, it's like... Uh, oh, yeah, like know, he's... and her had had a little rumble. She dragged him in and molested him. Yeah. That extra at the back really milks it when she comes out covering her eyes from the sun. Oh, well, it's a very <laughs> sunny day today. <laughs> Perhaps <laughs> I should cover my eyes. Uh, J. Todd Anderson. There he is. Who, uh, with the Coen uh, Brothers, or yep. storyboard artist, works with the Coen Brothers. J. Todd's a fantastic guy. He's yep. the guy who gets shot in the back by Peter Stromier in Fargo, right? Yep. Ah. He has a hilarious take as he drives by the, the murder scene and stares at them terrified. Yeah. And this is, is in... 52-year-old Keith Nash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this, is, this was all shot in... Uh, this Albuquerque. Was, yeah, there's a little comic book shop in Albuquerque, although some of the reverses we had to shoot in um, Las Vegas, Vegas, Mexico. Yeah. We had to mix it so up. So the exterior is Las Vegas. But Brett, little and Brett, then, who played, who gave you the nut shot, do you remember? Oh, that was terrifying. Keep yeah, I had, this strap, <laughs> I had a strap that I had a stand on that went lifted right up, like, just mere inches from my balls, and he had to run up and kick me, and the strap was supposed to stop his foot. Oh, so it wasn't just you wearing a cop and... No, no, no. Did he get you in the balls? He he got yes, but it, I mean it could have been a lot worse. The strap did hold, but you've but got it was terrifying. Low balls, though, haven't you? I have very low balls. Low and leathery. Yes, they're right at my ankles. Low and leathery. He, he kind of just lifted them up into spot. It's a frightening thing to see you naked from behind when mm -hmm. you reach down for something. You just see them swinging. I always have to wear pants. <laughs> oh, sorry, ball Go hammock. On, yeah, ball hammock. <laughs> ball hammock <laughs> is. Ball hammock <laughs> is. <laughs> balls. <laughs> ball hammock <laughs> is. Jane Eyre in <laughs> Ball Hammock. <laughs> so this, uh, this is like one of those first things where I got to like, you get to do a sequence, which is like two or three different locations where I shoot at them and chase them out. And then you like two months later, shoot the rest of it. Oh, I've right. never done that. Wasn't this one of the hottest days, Greg? When I mean, you have to have, have like, yeah, like a oh, giant yeah, air con horrible. pumping. Yeah. Terrible. Health in. That was actually the interior of the shop that was on that high street, wasn't it? It's not a yeah, studio. Yeah, that direction is Albuquerque, and the other direction is New Mexico. I didn't even know I mean, that little uh, bead of sweat. Bead of sweat yeah. Oh, I love the bead of sweat. Now, I'm just going to try and bring Naira in for a second, but, Naira, you, am I right in thinking that while you were producing this, you were also producing Scott Pilgrim in Toronto? That is true. You have, like, a billionaire Mars, don't you? And actually, when you were shooting this, I was, we were shooting the, the final fight sequence in Scott Pilgrim. In the chaos. Really? Theatre with Jason Schwartzman. Please Wicked. stop going on about Jason Schwartzman. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Todd. I could probably play Jay Todd in a film. Right, Scott Pilgrim, there is. We got a, there's a lot of Scott Pilgrim stuff at Comic Con and uh, knocking around, and a lot of stuff from Image Comics as well. Robert Kirkman, the, the Walking Dead author, and uh, Good Egg. His team are uh, are in uh, at Comic Con and gave us a lot of stuff. I'm wearing an Invincible T-shirt. Andy and, uh, Coons there and Ryan Otley. Ryan this Otley, was, yeah. Was a good time. <clears throat> I like that. I like that we had an idea. Yeah, right here he kicks me. This was terrifying. Hurry up, butt horns, which is a reference but, to yeah. Oh. yeah. Scary. Butthorns was from that Gary Busey thing, Bulletproof, that's on YouTube. Yeah. We've just been watching it online, and he calls everyone, Hey, Butthorn! <laughs> hey, Butthorn! <laughs> so we, we, we nick that. 
Meatball sandwiches. <laughs> From Point Break. Yeah, yeah. God, this is a good damn. He's got to go get a meatball sandwich. sandwich. <laughs> this was the day after we hung out too late at the hotel. I oh, remember being incredibly hungover doing this and being like, of course, we have to run and I have to get a gun shoved in my face. You look a little pale, actually. I love the yeah. fact here, Bill, when you get into the car and I think, does your earpiece come out slightly and you just adjust it and <laughs> Greg kept it in and I think it's really nice. This is when Haggard's just starting to turn, yeah. really. Also, Haggard, we had a thing he doesn't like to shoot, he doesn't know how to shoot. Yeah, he screams. Yeah, he screams every time he shoots and then uh, <laughs> at the end when he goes full-blown evil. He just he's does fine. it. Yeah. He's like a killing machine. Tell me which way the little green guy went. North, 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 east. I love Jason's line straight home now. Straight home. Yeah. <laughs> I like it when, when Joe says, uh, I got mine. Yeah, <laughs> I got mine. <laughs> that's, that's Joe's comedy genius right there in that <laughs> space between uh, Bill and Jason. Uh, I can, it's worth pointing out that because of the, the, the nature of our, all our lives, all being so far apart from each other, it's been. A hell of a wrangle to get us all here. Bill, thank you for coming in today. After I did, Bill did SNL last night, so he's yeah, it's insane. operating on a small amount of sleep. Oh, thank Joe you. Latrulio gets in later, but we couldn't, literally couldn't. We had, we had a window of two hours to do this today. and um, We got dinner at eight, so... Yeah, we got dinner yeah, at eight. Kristen had a big night last night, so she's, uh, she'll be resting up for the press tomorrow. It right. is uh, the past. It is the past. What do you mean, You've done enough. The hairy love eggs used to make us laugh a lot, didn't it? <laughs> it still does. I'm close now. I'll be fine. Well, but we've come all this way. Yeah, and at what cost, huh? I've shaken your faith. I've almost gotten you guys killed. Look at his little body. His ribs are great, aren't they? I want to give him a cuddle. I think we've come too far to let you do this alone. I think it would be feel like cuddling a big hair. <laughs> what, like a march hair? Yeah, you know, like a hair. Really hair. long, thin. I'm trying to about cuddling a hair. I remember the um. The model of Paul seemed to be a, constructed from a series of phalluses, didn't it? It was like, <laughs> like a knob from behind, and, and there was one in his arm, and there was one up in the back of his head. Nice. Nora? <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't me, that was him. <laughs> now, there was a lot more he here initially. It cut back to Paul and Ruth playing 20 questions and having a conversation about faith, and Paul saying that, you know, he wasn't... He, just, he didn't know that there was no God, he just said probably, and that there's lots of miracles in the universe that take place every day, like babies are born and cells divide, and basically saying that he's not saying, you know, categorically that there's nothing out there, he just doesn't know. But it just became, it was more talky than, than plot advancing. Yeah. Little Klingon warbird on the uh, key ring there. For the eagle-eyed yeah. viewer. Which, let's face it, is a lot of people. <coughs> Off they go. Lovely shot. My favourite shot in the film, I think. How did you do this, Greg? You were running really fast with a camera yeah. mounted on your shoulder, right? I had a camera helmet. Um, it was uh, it was stolen from uh, Sugarland Express. There's a great shot like that where two roads converge and people are talking on a radio, and I thought, oh, i got to use that somewhere. What were you on, though? A magic arm, was it? Or was it... We were on one of those uh, camera cars. It's like a souped-up Mercedes, very fast SUV that's got a crane on top. Right. It's the most amazing thing. The, that, that one that we were having to drive into? Uh, the yes, the one that, oh, that I was forcing you to drive practically through the camera. I was, trust that they got oh, out of the yeah. way before it smashed yeah. through the windscreen and killed me in the face. You're very trusting, Simon. Well, it's, you know, I'm, I'm glad I did. That's it. Oh, look, a little double take there from Latrulio. He knows what Haggard's thinking. Mm -hmm. Whoa. He's a dinosaur. He is so in the mood for a promotion now. Yeah. Now he's moving closer to full-blown evil. <laughs> this is the yeah, Gollum, Gollum moment. <laughs> yeah, my Gollum moment. <laughs> and this is where it all converges on where it began. The, the ranch. Oh, yes, that's where I've seen it before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I get it. She was the... Ca oh, I'm so stupid. <laughs> I like that, uh, one of the, I mean, one of the many brilliant things about what Dean Egg did was the fact that you can, you know, things like his shadow, the, the fact you can see O'Reilly in his eyes when O'Reilly's talking to him in the shop, stuff, the little details that you just wouldn't ordinarily notice that make it so much more real. I think the best thing that uh, can be said about Paul is the, the fact a lot of English press have said nothing about him at all. You know, they haven't said it's bad, they just kind of completely ignore him. They, oh, right, you get that that's... sense that they think he's just a character like us, you know. <laughs> yeah. That wasn't me. 
They let him off. Naira. He hasn't deserted England. Oh, who's that? <laughs> now, this is the first scene I ever felt. That was Naira poking out the door there. As a father of a child. <laughs> Ah, this is the first scene. Oh shot yeah, you coming were back after paternity. You were a father. I can see it in your performance. And there's my baby. <laughs> that was one of the first shots that Dina got to a point where I thought, oh, this is going to work. Yeah. Up to that point, and that was a good eight months in of to post, and I was terrified. I love the way Paul looks at you <laughs> when you move away from him. He's like, you fucker. <laughs> he's, like, he's really abandoning this. Yeah. Look. <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. It's all, yeah, it's all <laughs> a little shade. A little bit. It's like, he's like, oh, give me a break. What a dick. What a dick. We were all very much in awe of Blythe here, weren't we? That was the first day she was on set and she had this massive speech to do and we just kind of sat and, and, and watched her, you know, a, that was an a, amazing actress That was a horrible thing to do to an actor, to make them do this gigantic oh, yeah. speech. You've got to do day, it sometime, but... Greg. Yeah. She made Joe you cry, You might as well though. get it out of the way. She gave, she gave Joe the watery eyes. Because she was so moving. She's lovely, Blythe. She's great. She's so funny. She Because we were kind of slightly reverential around her at first because she was, you know, sort of senior member of the cast and we didn't want to be too rude, but she, she matched us. Oh, yeah. Curse for curse. And she's so beautiful as well. She's always ready with a little massage. She's great with the massage. She's really good. Yeah. I had a great thing that worked with her a little bit on this and then just moved to New York and found out she was my neighbour. Oh, no way. Yeah. We were walking out and she was there and I was like, no! How oh, funny. I just hid myself away. You can see where GP gets her uh, statuesque beauty, can't you? Huh. Yeah, there yes. Oh, look at Wiggles. Oh, I'm sorry, you know, if, if I could have done Nice basket of onions in the back. All Dean Egg's work. The, um... <laughs> Dean Egg onions. <laughs> Get your Dean Egg onions! A million dollars an onion it cost us for that. I think it's important to have... You know, when you make when you're doing a comedy, it's important to have some kind of substance to the story as well. You know, like because if you if you if it's just jokes, then when with a minute one of those jokes doesn't work, the whole film just stops working. And it's important. We've always felt it's important to have a credible story and characters that you care about and some emotional depth. And I think Bly has really sells that here. I like to call it putting the fun back into funeral. Christ. Well, it's true. <laughs> you know, I've often had uh, a lot of the biggest laughs in my life at funerals. And it's that thing that, you, you know, comedy and tragedy are often uh, very close bedfellows. <laughs> <laughs> this is BBC Radio 4. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> go, go! <laughs> this is a great... This was a multiple set moment, wasn't it? Because that's the studio. Yeah, yeah. And then you see Joe from inside, outside the real thing. That's the real thing. Yeah. I remember the guy, the stuntman's uh, kid did this, yeah, too. Tanner, right? yeah. Tanner did this. I remember he was such a cute little boy. I love Joe's little improvisation when he's in the uh, house. Where's the party at? Is that what he says? Yeah. Where's the party, man? <laughs> that little insert was done a lot later, wasn't it, Greg? Yep. That was. That was it. Now, do you remember this? Where you hit me with this, Simon? It was like this whole thing of like this is gonna take forever. Yeah. And first take. Do you remember doing that? Yeah, yeah. First yeah. take and looking after we did it, and Greg was like, "That was perfect." <laughs> this right here. Didn't we do a take when? Yep. Oh, boom! That right there, yeah. Yeah. And Greg was like, hey, that worked really well. I don't think we have to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> I think when there was one when I, uh, when Kristen screamed and I just opened my mouth, so I had like a really girly scream <laughs> in my mouth. You're like, <laughs> now you, you were running with a headless body then, weren't you? That's right, I was, yeah. You were about to see a very massive explosion, right? Oh my God. I love the, is... the, the short film that Lance made about the explosion. I love you, Bill, when you're, go you're going, oh! Yeah, Did yeah. you fucking see that? I asked the dumbest question on earth. Did everybody just see that? <laughs> it's like, no, we missed the, the house blowing up in front of us. We were, we were all just blown, I mean, pardon the pun, blown away by it, because it, oh. it was huge. Yeah, it was, this was crazy. Boom. Whoa. Boom. Because we saw it, heard it, and felt it. In, in, that, in, a, in a second, we saw it, and then there was the big bang, and then this blast wave just went, wow. And we must have been like a quarter of a mile from it. Papa. Boom goes the dum dum. Yeah, that was his. <laughs> what is that? I didn't get that reference. That's this uh, internet video. Boom goes the dynamite. Ah, uh, okay. But it's uh, you should see that. It's really funny. But yeah, Jason Bateman kept. Yeah. Boom goes dum dum. And this is like a couple of days later. All this stuff. Yeah, the, whenever we shot this location, it would start raining every every hour. Yeah, that's all I remember about this location is, is Larry, the DP, looking up at the sky going, all right, go, 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 wait, no, 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 wait, wait. 
Okay, now go. Shoot, 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 shoot. Wait, wait, wait. Remember the, li <laughs> we had the lightning meters that told us how That's far right. away? Oh, yeah. I remember on that location, though, us hanging out in my trailer, and it started raining, and we watched The Running Man. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we all piled into my trailer and watched the entire film of The Running we Man, had like a waiting for the raining to go away. Mystery Science Theater hour, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For The Running Man. It was yeah. great. I think the original script, that was... Uh, they drove that through a big barn, didn't they? It was a barn, yeah. Yeah, which we couldn't afford to do. <laughs> so we made it a windmill. Now I'm looking at Naira, somehow <laughs> blaming her. Yeah, because Naira couldn't open her me. wallet. <laughs> <laughs> My weed! <laughs> <laughs> that was a very late addition to the final cut, wasn't it? There was. There was. That weed. joke had been cut for a long time. I thought, what were we thinking? I like the way Haggard is now sporting the same look as Ruth with the yeah. one black tack glass. We were going to do a promotional gimmick to have um, fucking son of a titty sucking two ball. Was that to give out. Glasses at the cinema with one eye blacked out and say the film was in 1D. <laughs> <laughs> and now in selected cinemas in glorious 1D. Also available in 2D. Lost it. Yeah. Evil hater. Evil hater. And it helped me because I had burned a hole in the roof of my mouth. Do you remember this? How? I ate a sausage and set <laughs> and it burnt. I had to go to the hospital. No. I, I didn't know had that. a hole in the roof of my mouth when we were shooting this. So I was in a lot of I was in a lot of pain. I had this like numbing stuff and I had to get a shot in the roof of my mouth, all the shit. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. And so it was when we shot all this. So I was I was using it, as they say. Was I away <laughs> at a hospital, I guess. I think I you might have been, yeah. I remember shooting this too, and a huge hailstorm came in. Do you remember that, Greg? Oh, yeah. Oh, that was a hailstorm came in Taos. We were in Taos, yeah. yeah. Whoa. Awesome. I, I think Wait, I have that. Uh, what just happened? That hailstorm <laughs> on film. You have, yeah. I remember well, when I had a flip video thing. I remember when you were shooting that, and you go, the camera's going to pan back to you, Bill, and you got to have a face. I go, well, what kind of face do you want? And you're like, mm, clockwork orange kind of face? <laughs> 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 like that kind of thing? <laughs> Evil guy? <laughs> Uh, evil guy who tilts his head down? Yeah. Evil guy tilting his head down, looking up thing. We looked at um, this scene a lot in the in the build-up to it, just because we, we looked forward to it, rather, because um, <clears throat> it was such a... It's a big thing to kill two characters that are liked. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, when when Joe goes, you know all bets are off. It's like yeah. we specifically killed the most lovable character in the film, apart from Paul and Graham and Clive and Ruth, I guess. Because it means then that anything can happen, you know. In a very early draft of the script, uh, there was also a giant tornado in this scene. That's there? right, yeah. <laughs> and Paul made it stop and then come back. Yeah. And I get to get the uh, Wilhelm Yay! scream, which Yay! is uh, the coolest thing ever. <laughs> which I never told uh, Simon and Nick no. were in there. So. No, until, uh, until the premiere. and uh, I saw it at the cast and crew a week before. And were we great. talking about it when I was doing ADR? Was yeah. Right? Yeah. I was like... You were, you were saying, oh, do you have to go to a special place to get it? And it's like a velvet box, and you bring it to the same <laughs> studio and yeah. like put the tape in. And there's a, a little. You just yeah, open the box and it does it. It's a real girly screen, that's what's so great about yeah. it. Yeah. Here we go with um, Jason's hand solo moment. Boring conversation anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Always gets a ripple from the, from the faithful. Well, like, when, when we watched that at the premiere, it didn't really get a massive laugh, did it? And I think I remember saying to Simon, America will like that more. Yeah, 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 you did, yeah, you did. <laughs> that, that'll, get a laugh, that'll get a laugh in America. America will get that. Oh, uh, and here's, oh, where are you, going? Uh, think, you know, one, one of the most resonant now, scenes Now, what is this a reference to? <laughs> <laughs> this is one of my favourite shots in the movie. It's so beautiful. Yeah. I really wish it'd be really funny if that guy from Close Encounters, the guy with the glasses who joins them for oh, yeah. a little bit, if yeah. he just shows up and starts running with you guys. <laughs> hey! <laughs> hey, and he gets gassed and yeah. he falls asleep and he's like, again! <laughs> or we just walk past a rock and he's asleep on a yeah. rock. Or, you, or yeah, you just see hey, a, a skeleton on? with those glasses <laughs> there, like still there. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been good. <laughs> with a skeleton with a cardigan on. Oh, skeleton with that cardigan on. That was just knockout gas. Oh. Yeah, it's like, oh, he's, he, he's been up there dead. <laughs> this, uh, this whole area we're standing in is the parking lot of the ski basin, which everyone, they turned into this. They're covered in turf. It was a very good job. Amazing. We were up here for quite a long time, and it was uh, kind of 30 degrees down in, uh, in the valley, and you'd come up here at night and have to wear, like, giant coats. It was July, and we were freezing. It was July. And so we, you guys um, sending photos from this and me being so jealous. Like, Look at oh, that. Man, you guys are oh, yeah, you're dead now. I'm dead now. Well, or is he? 
And I, weren't you guys up here when we found Bowls. out uh, Wig and Sigourney were I mean, nominated I'm for Emmys? Yeah. yeah, I remember that. Yeah, we had special Emmy cupcakes that Val bought That's out. That's right, we did. Thanks to Miss Naira Park. Thank you to Miss Naira Park. We're still here. <laughs> We had uh, a few little treats like that, didn't we, sometimes? Didn't an ice cream van come round and then, like, a guy with chicken and... That meth van came round. The around. meth lab came round. Yeah, the, breaking, <laughs> the Breaking Bad meth lab came by. <laughs> there was an ice cream truck, we were told, where we were meth dealers. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. There wasn't very good meth. I remember when, um, <laughs> when um, uh, what was her name? Oh, craft Services, um, crazy girl who did the light Julie show. or something? Julie? No. She juggled flames or something. Yeah, yeah. she bought, used to bring out, like... Uh, Pretzels and, and CCQ. Remember that, like hot cheese and. What's oh, it? Yeah. Chili con queso? Chili That's yes. the stuff that. Yeah. Burned my mouth. Oh, was it? Yeah. That, That's or the, the stuff, stuff that burned the, my the, mouth. The stuff that she was making was what uh, set my. Oh, uh, put okay. me in the hospital. My God. Uh, this is always quite nerve wracking when you have to stand 50 feet from a helicopter. Yes. Yeah. This no matter was, how this hard was, you are, it's always slightly it was, worrying. I was anxious watching this happen. This was not a. Not a CG moment happening here. It's the real deal. It got near too at some at some points. I like the fact that you put in the laser sights to, to explain why we don't just run away. Because initially we do run away, then we see Zoil coming and we run back, and that yeah, just was just too a little, complicated. Yeah, it was a little too complicated. And oh, who's this? Oh my goodness, mate! Wow, there she comes. The winner of the cheesecake derby. <laughs> <laughs> She's so tall as well. Wow. Look at her. She's got one of the nicest profiles in the history of Hollywood. She's got a beautiful little turned-up nose. What? Put it time. I remember I was seeing this earlier, and it was like a tracer bullet, and I remember saying to Greg, well, I think if it was a tracer bullet, Greg, it would be glowing. <laughs> like a real <laughs> gun idiot. Giddiot. I love this reveal of Zoyal being good. I think it's worked. I mean, from the audiences I've seen it with, it's always been a nice surprise that he's actually a good guy. Don't fucking move. Oh. Everyone be cool. Everyone be cool. She was such a game bird when it came to that fight. When oh, we man. especially went back to do the reshoots as well. She, she was very you, up for us kind of biting her and yeah. When Sigourney Weaver says bite a bit harder, you, you bite a bit harder. <laughs> yeah. You don't yeah. believe. No. Now this scene no, when you see the fight here is Panic. cut together from moments from a year apart, because we That's initially, right. Clive and Paul didn't really have a part in the fight because it was written just that they were passive and it, it just seemed not to work when we got into the edit. So we went back and we shot Paul getting kicked in the nuts and Clive biting, right? There was not a Both, moment yeah. during that scene when I wasn't thinking in my head, it's a good weaver. <laughs> oh, my God. I got a little ba baby bee wow. during this. Getting you said it. Uh, 2010. Yeah, 2010. she said it. Crunch. World Crunch. 2010. Ow. 2010, 2009. <laughs> I can't even keep a trick. Here we go. Get away from her, you bitch! Rah! Yay! <laughs> that's, a, that's a clapper. That's an American cinema clapper. That is. I, the, come, Jason's double take here when he when he realizes for the first time that his name sounds like a film starring <laughs> Nick Nolte and Barbara Streisand <laughs> is priceless. Is it Barbara Streisand? I think it's Halle isn't Berry. It? How, is it Halle Berry? No, in yeah. Lorenzo Zoil, isn't it? Yeah, yeah Lorenzo Zoil. Isn't, isn't it or Susan Sarandon? Oh, Susan Sarandon. Oh, Sarandon. Oh, yeah, Susan I beg your pardon, Susan. <clears throat> what should we look at? It's like, uh, yeah, that's right. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's, I, I just never thought of it. There he comes. I love Carol Lynch's work in this. Now, what was the reasoning behind cutting his little um, speech there? Um, less is more, I guess. Okay. Because he did obviously he said something about all the uh, strength in the Lord. Oh, look at that! It's nice that you died in a film for once. Yeah, it's usually me cradling you in my arms. Yeah. Isn't Next one, I've Aww. got to get the girl too. Next time you get to make out with a sexy It is kind of actress. the reverse of that, uh, the paintball. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I died in Sean as well, <laughs> yes, and Hot yeah. Fuzz. <laughs> but you come oh, back in this. Yeah. Oh, I come back in this. But there's You're a scene where there is, yeah. I like the line, I really like this T-shirt. <laughs> it's true. This was tough to do, and we did it a lot, lot of times. We did, eh? 
It's hard when you're, I mean, to emote Well, most properly. of those times I, I wasn't running any film. Uh, <laughs> you're just jerking off. Why? What? Sir. Oh, no. I think people are really, sh when I've seen it with an audience, they really don't expect this and... and, and Whoever's still left in the audience. Yeah, whoever's still watching at this point. Even though we've very, very pointedly set up that Paul won't, you know, it's dangerous for Paul to reanimate people, so you obviously know that's going to happen at some point in the film when he says that, if you're paying attention. It's still, I think people may have forgotten by that point and so are surprised by Clive's, I mean, Graham's demise. I love Paul's, uh, I love the fact that, you know, Paul has potentially influenced the karate kid and Mr Miyagi as yeah. well with that, <laughs> yeah. that clap he does before he kind of heals. Yeah. The 80s would not have happened without Paul. No, no. no. I don't think you can sort of see the... The blood crystallising. Yeah, and reforming. Yeah, I always thought that Dean did an interesting effect there. Oh, my goodness. That effect is the same cost as Nicaragua's G GDP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my first two films oh. were just spent in the last ten seconds. Look at that. He's been shaking his little... I like a lot of people are also quite touched by the fact that I think Paul has died at the end, too. Yeah. I quite like that. Oh, Blythe. Oh, no. And he goes all white, too, like E.T. Like e. in the pond, in the stream. <laughs> <laughs> this was a late addition, I think, Greg. You, it was your idea to have Paul actually um, die, wasn't it? I feel like, yeah, we had to do one more thing with it. That... <laughs> Mostly to tee up another smart-ass line. So these kind of... These shots of everyone looking worried about Paul came later as well? Yep. Oh. Oh, lovely. Wasn't that really, really dangerous? Sometimes. My hair in this film is a thing of beauty, and I've got to thank Jane Walker. Yeah? My long-time makeup artist and friend who's done my makeup since Spaced for, um, for creating such a frightful barnet. <laughs> <laughs> Barnet Fair, hair Barnet Barnet for anyone not Co Connie Ryman slang for you listeners in America. Barnet Fair. Oh look! Pray silence, oh, he's please. Go for, that. for the big kiss, bang! Oh look! Snuggaroo! The oh. Hayes Code would not have allowed that. <laughs> no tongues in the Hayes Code. Uh, I think it was funny though that that by the time we got to this point, we were all we all knew each other so well. It was just wasn't in the slightest bit awkward. <laughs> so so brutal. That is the Jengas. Great ship. Lovely traditional 50s shape ship. Here's a little gag for the very, very um, sharp of watching. It's the alien crew. <laughs> Washing the... <laughs> From the... Yeah, uh, the, the yeah there's a little Yafit Koto. Uh, there's a little... There is a little Yafit yeah, Koto. Harry Dean Stanton. Yeah. There's a little guy with... And the, Skerritt. One of them's got the a beard. beard. Tom Skerritt. <laughs> it's the whole crew of the Nostromo. Look, I can just see me and Jason just actually not in character, just talking. <laughs> Other things were going how on elsewhere. Long, how long's the ride back to the hotel? Are you serious? Are you driving back tonight? How much snow did you get up here? <laughs> uh, Nick? Sorry. I think the um, Paul's brush off of Moses here is almost one step too far. He looks really crestfallen. I think, I, yeah. But John plays the, the little bit of hurt. I think I wish it had been more warm between them. I, you know, I think he should have said you too or something like that, you know. But it, 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 but it, it, <laughs> it, it gets a lot. It gets a lot. Yeah. And Moses did shoot. Yeah. He did shoot his friend. Now, Nick, you came out with this line about this odd Back to the Future bastardization about the... I didn't even remember it in Back to the Future until someone said, oh, it's like the Back to the Future. I thought, yeah, yeah. oh, yeah, it's Wait, true. what's that? Um, baby, where we're going, you won't need oh, tea. Yeah. It just made us right. laugh so much on the day. Well, I think my point about what does it, it mean? is it feels slightly sinister. I always yeah. think as soon as they take off, they're going to throw her into the reactor and they'll <laughs> use her carbon to fuel the <laughs> ship home. <laughs> yeah, she's called you and me later in the. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> He's always. <laughs> I, um. Yeah. To ask. I look tired there. The David Arnold did such an amazing job. We should say something about that because, uh, you know, my hope was that the film would feel. The first time I met Simon, you said to me it should be like Little Miss Sunshine, but instead of Alan Arkin, it's an alien. Yeah. And uh, that it should feel like a kind of real indie or 70s road movie that morphs into a Hollywood film by the end. Yeah. And so much of that comes from David's score. I mean, this whole section is scored underneath and it's so 
it's the real thing. I mean, it's it's completely sincere and also hilarious and beautiful. And we, I mean, initially, I remember in the in the naive early stages, Nick and I said to you, Greg, about we wanted John Williams to score it if we could somehow get him, even though I'm sure John doesn't get out of bed for less than a million pounds a second because he's amazing. But what David did was, I think he brought a, a humour to it, which, uh, you know, as brilliant as John Williams is, I don't know if he would have had, and, um, and also managed to recreate that beautiful, sweeping majesty that John Williams always brings, yeah. you know. Also, we've had quite a long relationship with David, so he knows us and gets us, and that you know that's a great foundation for. I'm not ashamed to say that I cried when um, when I was in the studio and the orchestra first struck up. You should be ashamed, you're a grown oh. man. <laughs> oh, Nick, please don't ridicule me. <laughs> I was just so. It was our. Mo this is our film. This is an idea that Nick and I had in a garden with Naira, who is still here. Who's still here? Naira, <laughs> Naira, why don't you tell that story? <laughs> Come on. We're going to see that Paul picture in the end Nick. credits. Oh yeah. Uh, Greg, what was your thinking about the ship and how it was powered and stuff, about the lightning? You had quite a nice theory on that. Oh, there was some idea that it, um, it drew lightning from the sky and it uh, made some anti-gravity field that sucked it up, yeah, which nice. was originally supposed to be something kind of um, quiet. And I thought, no, it's a big movie. It's yeah. an ending. You have to make it beautiful and <laughs> lots of lights. You could say a reference to Back to the Future again, drawing the power of lightning to uh, yes. go into hyperspace. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we, we, we'd been working in the rain a lot and we said, let's make a film somewhere hot and we spitballed this idea about a desert and an alien and two British guys and then seven years later we made it and there it is. And this Look is d -Neg at his best. Look at, at that, it's Star amazing. Destroying the Star Destroyer at the beginning of Star Wars. I love, uh, as the ship goes over, you can see lots of other tiny little ships within it. Yeah. Kind of swarming you, around you in this You go dome. inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, you don't just go over, you yeah, yeah, inside yeah. it. The little ships. <laughs> Look at it's that. parasite ships. Yeah. It must cost a bloody fortune to heat that. <laughs> <laughs> I think they run on um, so Economy 7. It's lightning. Oh. <laughs> that was good, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I think there was talk of ending a film right there, wasn't there, at some yeah. point. And here we go. This is more Oscar Wright. More Oscar Wright stuff. Mots. And here we are in LA. This That's the nice reshoot. Actually. That was two years later. <laughs> oh, yeah. After we'd shot the original stuff. That was um, mm. actually in, uh, near UCLA or something, I think. We, wasn't, we can go, didn't go back to San Diego for that bit. Oh, it's back with the layers. Oh, yeah. Oh. <coughs> I always think she sounds like a, someone from Brooklyn when she's Yatse, Yatse, Yatso. Yatso. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, a of, there's a lot of Jedi references in this movie. Yeah, that that film that that extended into a bit about the fact that Graham and uh, Ruth had been sleeping together using a Wonder Woman lasso of truth to tie each other up, but we've lost it. I'm glad you did. Oh, there is. Uh, not a big end. That's that's from uh, and that's a shot from the original ending. That's interesting. There was another ending with Graham and Clive at Comic Con signing their book. And um, we lost it. There's Ruth Glasses, Vital Creek. Mm. Oh, look, there's the dog, Paul. Why is my name spelled with a small n? What? In the like credits. Is it? Yeah. Chapter one? Very <laughs> we brought Jane back to exploit her for her glee popularity. And um, they came up with this lovely little gag where you realise Jane's actually, uh, and Pat's actually gay and hitting on Ruth. Oh, I love Kristen doing this. I can't, I just I can't. You were so damn pretty. You should see me out of these crazy clothes. <laughs> I'd like that. <laughs> she thinks about it, though. <laughs> it's like, you know, she's got this... No, she, she can I got a boyfriend. boyfriend. I got a boyfriend. Yeah. Look, I've, uh, I haven't really looked. I'm, this is the second, only second time I've seen this fully finished, this closing credit sequence. I love this, well, this day of shooting with um, Jeffrey. Oh, he went on and on. He was so funny that day, just doing stuff. When he does this stuff about Arthur C. Clarke and takes his he hat off. He lifts his hat off. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Dickens edited the film. There Oscar is Dickens. Winner, Oscar Chris winner. Dick, who won, won for Slumdog. Fantastic editor. Great guy. Bald with glasses. He, uh, you, Chris and Moby are starting up a, a... We look like each other. We look like each other. There's... Nick Angel. Nick Angel. Oh, look. Aww. Kisses. You get a woman, I get a bear. <laughs> a space bear. Oh. Oh, oh, stop it. Oh, yeah. Oh. 
<laughs> there's the picture I drew of Benaira years and years ago. That was that little Ooh, picture. Yeah, there it is. It was you... in your uh, office when Nara's... I came in to do the test. That's I remember right. it was in the yeah. office when I came up and you're like, it all started with this. <laughs> this I'm is like, where it wow. began. <laughs> This is where it began. I've got that book at home, and inside is the, the biography of who? Yanni. Yanni. <laughs> Yanni. <laughs> Jonathan Watson, our first day. Good, oh, awesome, good awesome, J Dubs. Awesome, awesome guy. And handsome Bob Graff. Yes. Oh, well, line producer Ryan Bob. Craig. Ryan Craig. Great stuff. The big guy, Sigourney Weaver. Let's go. Who else? I think Steven Spielberg is, is credited as himself, isn't he? Yes. Yeah, there it is. Steven himself. Let's start. There's Darren Prescott was our, a great stunt supervisor, and his son Tanner, who was our great little Paul standing occasionally. And there's Cliff. Oh, old Cliff Fleming. Oh, L lovely, the getch, the getch. lovely Karen Roof Getchell. Beautiful. It gets no better than that. Danny Gold. He sent me a picture from uh, something the other day of him and his wife next to a Paul poster somewhere. Here's some more David's great music. Yeah. This is this is the Clive and Graham theme. Let's take the Um. I mean, I don't want to blow smoke up anyone's bum bum, but I've got to say, this crew were absolutely amazing. I'm yeah, saying, I were. think there's Jamie, my assistant out there, our assistant out there, and uh, looked after Minnie a lot. Thank you, Jamie, for taking care of our dog. My wife is credited in this film as well. Yeah, she worked hard on it, same as, uh, well, in the DVD department as well. That's right, post production. Chris was on post. It's funny, I I'm seeing so many names in this in this uh, role of people that I met. Chris, Christoph Zanak Danek was, was Paul Standen, who was a, a small actor who, also known as the Anvil, <laughs> and uh, amazing true. drummer as J Todd. <clears throat> God, we had a good time. I know you all see that on, on, uh, on commentary. No, it was definitely sickening. one of those shoots where we went, while it was going on, you were all bu you were bummed because you knew it was going to have to end at yeah, some point. Yeah. It was just like, everybody here is so cool. I it was not a run it was, it was an extraordinary I had quite bad withdrawals, experience. you know. I remember yeah. I, I remember going to the airport to, to Albuquerque on the last day and just feeling a little, I think I'm showing a little tear. I've had little dreams, Santa Fe dreams. I um, do. I hope, can we I shoot Paul's there? Can we shoot Paul's in Santa Fe? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Can we, Nara? Definitely. Yes, good. Nora Park, producer film. She's oh, still no. here. She's here all day. <laughs> You're show. doing commentaries for all the rest of the movies coming through. You're doing Scott Pilgrim next, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Alone. Um, yeah, just, just alone. Just just you. I'd listen to that. I'd yourself. like it. One of night, you can actually watch <laughs> Nara do commentary on Shaun of the Dead if you watch it without a commentary. That's Nara's <laughs> commentary. <laughs> yeah, you're kind of like when, when Terrence Malick does commentaries. <laughs> Silence. Just hear the sound of ice in a whiskey glass. <laughs> right. <sighs> Uh, Scott yeah. Choppy Lexell, there he is. Good egg. Keith Partridge. Now, of course, when you watch your c t credits back of a movie, there's also a lot of people you don't know, and there are other people that worked on it afterwards and stuff. Like, for instance, geez, double I think we should give Double Negative a little, yeah, a little clap. Good work. Please watch the documentary about the animation because you get to see just a few of the people that worked on as animators. Here they are now. This is just a few of them as well. They weren't all credited. They, there was a, a 300? Yeah, say? more. More than Spartans. Cloth Muscle FX. Cloth Muscle? Cloth Muscle. Is that someone's Hello, name? Hello, I'm Derek Cloth Muscle. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Cloth Stroke Muscle. So you want to change your name to Cloth Muscle? <laughs> <laughs> yes. From Giovanni to Cloth, cloth muscle. muscle. That is right. <laughs> that was my mum's maiden name. Great. Why? Because I like clothing and I like muscle. <laughs> I believe the name is a uh, fitting combination of the two. If you look at my body, people always go, cloth muscle? Sizzy, cloth muscle. Thank God for Aon Albert Co. Ruben. Oscar Wright, there he is. Oh, Karen no. Beaver. Good guy. The Beaver. Karen, Karen Beaver. Karen Beaver. Karen Beaver worked on Spaced and actually worked on Asylum, which is the first thing me, Jess, and Edgar worked together. and. Um, you, Big Talk at the time was just you and Karen, wasn't it? In an attic in uh, yeah, Fitzroy. Yeah, quite a few years. <laughs> Some of the music. We come uh, a long way, right? Yeah. Oh, this is my. I love this variation of the Paul theme. Hate to say goodbye. Now that was written by uh, Freddie Leroy and uh, Al Cantu. Yeah. Who uh, uh, Freddie Lee? Well, Leroy his name was, but uh, he, they they wrote the um, this tune. There were a couple of guys that worked on the movie as drivers and uh, Nick Burns. Is that the Nick Burns? Uh, Maureen Pegg. Maureen Pegg. Greg Nicotero. Jeremy Lovering. Sarah um, Allen Tucker. And they wrote this song especially for the film, and it's in the film as a needle drop somewhere, and it's and, and there it is in the credits. So thank you, Alan Leroy. Well, I think we should probably say goodbye, Naira. Goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Till next time.